Welcome to Corporate Finance. Welcome to Introduction to Corporate Finance. My name is Greg Pierce, the Finance Coach, and we're here to present today one of 12 sessions in Corporate Finance, a very exciting field, uh, one that you will use in your daily life, uh, whether it be in work or on a personal basis. We'll cover foundational topics that will help you succeed as a financial analyst, as a financial manager, but also in general as director, manager, vice president, or president of your own company. We'll also cover points that will help you tremendously in your personal life, uh, things like how to calculate a mortgage, how much money do I need to uh, save today to reach my financial goals 30 or 40 years from now. So we'll cover a lot of things that are very relevant on a uh, corporate financial basis, but also uh, on a personal financial basis. The information presented will tie closely to uh, the number one selling collegiate textbook in America, and that is uh, Fundamentals of Corporate Finance by Ross Westerfield and Jordan. This book is uh, one of the best sellers in the undergraduate field and graduate field uh, currently, and it covers just about all the essentials you need to know to become uh, an outstanding manager, as I said before, financial manager, or also uh, to help you uh, live a successful life. We're going to have uh, several key learning objectives in this first session. Uh, first, what is corporate finance? What's it all about? And what does a financial manager do every day? Uh, what are the key forms of business organization? If I want to start a business, what types of forms are available to me? And some of you may have experienced some of these already uh, as a young person. Um, during your life, what are the goals of financial management overall? What is the one overall key objective when you go into work every day? Uh, fourth, the fourth objective, what is the agency problem that you might run into? You'll hear about the agency problem a lot. You may see some student athletes uh, that you know who have gotten into an agency problem at a fairly young age. You may uh, be in that realm yourself where you have gotten into an agency problem uh, even here at college. And finally, what do financial markets do? How do they interact with the corporation? That will be our fifth learning objective. Uh, the story of uh, Steve Jobs and Apple ties together a lot of the concepts in this chapter very, very well. So we're going to talk for a few seconds about uh, Steve Jobs and the founding of Apple and how he's doing these days. Apple Computer was founded in 1976 in Los Altos, California. Uh, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak got together in uh, uh, the Jobs' parents' garage and uh, formed Apple Computer. Sales grew very rapidly with the Apple I, Apple II, Apple IIe in the educational market, and the Macintosh, very, very popular computers. Uh, then around 1985, about nine, ten years later, there was an industry-wide sales slump, and uh, Apple got caught in this a bit. Uh, Jobs was relieved of his um, duties, so here he was, the founder of the company, an entrepreneur, and then an executive with the company relieved of his duties by the board of directors. Uh, and he went on to found Next Computer uh, in 1985 and Pixar when he bought the computer graphics division of Lucasfilms in 1986. And as you know, these became highly successful companies. Uh, Jobs had 7 million shares, um, worth $120 million in 1985 when he left Apple. Apple was worth about a billion at that time. Contrast that with today when Apple has uh, several hundred million shares and uh, $250 billion in market value. It was one of the uh, highest market capitalization uh, companies in the United States at this time. In 1996, um, Apple was having some difficulties. So here, this is about 10 years later after Mr. Jobs had been let go. Uh, Apple bought Next Computer for about $430 million. Uh, Mr. Jobs received $200 million uh, in stock options and a Gulfstream jet, probably to fly back and forth between Pixar and uh, Apple. Uh, they needed the visionary back, and the founder was uh, offered to come back to uh, Apple Computer. Uh, today, Apple's one of America's great business success stories. Uh, you know the successes of the products that uh, Apple sells the iPod, the iPhone, the iPad, and a countless stream of innovation. And a lot of that's thanks to uh, Mr. Jobs coming back. So you'll see a lot of these concepts in this session uh, tied together very neatly by the story of uh, Mr. Jobs, who was a uh, entrepreneur and a founder of Apple, and then an ex-employee, and then re-employed and became an executive once again at Apple Computer. 
So today we want to talk about what is corporate finance exactly? What um, does it involve? What are the things that are on the mind of the chief financial officer, the president of the company at all times? Number one, one of the first questions that is on the mind of the CFO, what long-term investments should we take on? Uh, for instance, at Walmart, this might be something like opening a new store uh, in your local area, or do you have enough Walmart stores? How about a Sam's Club? Do we need another Sam's Club? This all falls under the category of capital budgeting. So when you hear the term capital budgeting, we're talking about property, plant, and equipment. How much property, plant, and equipment should we carry in our business? Uh, with a software company like Microsoft or Apple, I might be talking about should we develop a new operating system like Windows 7 or in Apple's case, Snow Leopard. Um, these are questions that are on the uh, CFO's mind every day. Question number two, um, where will we get the financing to build these new buildings, property, plant, and equipment, if we decide to go ahead? Uh, this question is called the capital structure question. What is capital structure? Capital structure is the mix of debt, long-term debt and equity in the firm. Equity, when we talk about equity uh, in all of these sessions, we'll be talking about stocks. And when we talk about debt, debt will come in the form of bonds and uh, sometimes in terms of uh, mortgages. Uh, generally, when we talk about stocks and bonds, we're talking about securities. So we use the, the term securities throughout uh, all these sessions. We're talking about stocks and bonds. Uh, the third decision on the mind of the uh, CFO and CEO every day or, uh, is how will I manage my everyday financial activities? Here we're talking about working capital management. Uh, if you've had an accounting course, you learn that working capital is current assets minus current liabilities. And you must, the key word here is manage. You must manage these details. When we talk about working capital, we're talking about things like cash and uh, accounts receivable, um, inventory, prepaid assets. Those are your current assets. Current liabilities are things like uh, accounts payable, notes payable, taxes payable, wages payable, interest payable. And when we subtract these two, we get working capital. And this is what must be managed uh, every day by the chief financial officer and others in the company. Again, the key word, let me underscore, is manage. Manage your working capital. So those are the three questions that are on the mind of the financial manager each and every day. Here's a typical organization chart in the large corporation. Again, I have two examples up here, uh, Apple Computer and Microsoft, and they have slightly different titles at times. Generally, the board of directors is at the top of the organization. They manage, uh, they actually hire and fire the managers that um, will run the corporation. At the top is typically a chairman, chief executive officer. Uh, in this case, the CEO, uh, Steve Jobs at Apple, and a uh, different title at Microsoft, and that is the chairman, Bill Gates. And Mr. Gates has since uh, moved on a bit, relinquished some of his daily operating activities to move on to uh, run with his wife, the, the uh, Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation. Under these gentlemen, you may have a COO or a CFO or both uh, to help run the organization. For instance, at Apple, you have uh, Tim Cook as COO, and you have Peter Oppenheimer as CFO. And on the other side, on the Microsoft side, you have Steve Ballmer as CEO. He has a CEO title, and Chris Liddell has a CFO title. Now, the CFO is responsible for two groups, typically the treasurer and the controller. What does the treasurer worry about every day? Treasurer worries about uh, cash, essentially. Cash management, uh, should we offer credit, uh, financial planning, sometimes sometimes there's a separate um, organization under uh, the CFO where, who does financial planning. It's a very important role. Um, on the controller side, what does the controller do? The controller controls, basically. What does the controller control? Uh, taxes, cost accounting, basically setting in all the controls that are necessary in the corporation. So you see the CFO has a very important role, and uh, we've gone over the three key questions in corporate finance that are on his mind at all times.